Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mathlog. This lesson is uh, Transforming Units. So this is lesson 6-4 in our textbook. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at www.mrmathblog.com. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Here's our common core strand for our most awesome teachers. And our, our question here is, how can we transform units to solve problems? So here's an example here. So a car's gas mileage is the average distance uh, the car can travel on a um, one gallon of gas. Mark's car has a gas mileage of 20 miles per gallon. So how many miles uh, can Mark travel on nine gallons of gas? And so here's speedy Mark right here. Okay, so let's first uh, analyze uh, the units in the problem. So uh, we know that the, the two quantities, we know the car's gas mileage right here. So the car's gas mileage is 20 miles per gallon. And we know the amount of gas that he has. He has nine gallons right here. Okay, so, so the gas mileage is uh, 20 miles per gallon. So it's going to be 20, and we'll put miles right here, per one gallon right there. Okay, here's 20 miles per gallon. Okay, so the amount of gas is nine gallons right here. Okay. All right, and then so we want to know a third quantity. We want to know how far the distance can uh, mark travel on those nine gallons right here. So how many miles is that right there, okay? All right, so, so we're going to determine the relationship among the units. So the answer needs to have units of miles because it says how many miles can mark travel right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, multiply 20 miles per gallon times the 9 gallons, and we can divide out the gallons. So right here, if we, if we divided out these gallons right here, this gallon on the bottom will cancel out this gallon on the top right there, and we'll be left with just miles right there, okay? So the product will have um, uh, units of just miles, uh, which is what we want to find. So how many miles can you go on the, on the nine gallons right there? So let's go ahead and use the relationship. So 20 miles per one gallon times nine gallons, okay? So we're just going to multiply those and cancel out those gallons right there, and we're left in miles. So 2 times 9 is 18, so 20 times 9 is 180, so 180 miles. So Mark's car can travel 180 miles on 9 gallons. Now, do you think it'd be exactly 180 miles? Well, probably not. It might be more, it might be less, depending on if, he's, if, he, if he goes faster, then uh, the less mileage he'll get. And so if he goes slower, it goes more steady, then the more miles he'll get. So it'll be roughly an average of about 180 miles right there, okay? So explain why the units of gallons are crossed out on the multiplication step in that problem right there. Well, right here we got gallons on the top and on the bottom, which is the numerator and denominator. So when we multiply fractions and then we have gallons in both the numerator and denominator, they always cancel out. And so we're just left with just miles right here. The gallons cancel. So we're left at 20 times 9 or 180 miles right there, okay? So sometimes we need to convert units before solving. So sometimes, you know, like in this next example, we have feet and yards, and so we have to convert them all to the same unit. So we'll convert them all to, to feet here. So here we go. John wants to put sod down. Sod is grass uh, in his backyard, and they, it comes uh, already pre-rolled out right here in these little rolls. Have you guys seen sod before? Okay, so he asks his wife Sandra to give him uh, the measurements over the telephone. And so she reports to him that it's uh, in the shape of a rectangle and uh, has an area of 315 square feet. And she's being tricky right now because she knows uh, John's a math teacher. And, um, and so she says the width is in five yards. What's the length in feet? Okay. All right. So here we have it in square feet. And so here we have the width in yards. So we have to have the same measurement. So we have to convert them both to both to feet or both to yards. And it's easier in this problem to convert them both to feet. So... So we know two quantities, the area of the backyard, the area of the backyard is 315 square feet right there. And we also know the width, the width is in, uh, in yards, so it's in um, five yards. Oh, and I want you to recognize also that uh, square feet is the same as feet times feet. That's where we get square feet right there, okay? And so the width is in, in yards right there. Okay, and so we want to know the length. So the length is how many feet, okay, because that's what the questions ask. What's the length in feet right here? And so that's why we want to convert uh, this width that's in yards into feet, because we want to know what's the length in feet right there, okay? All right, so 
Here's the question down here, and so I just saved that down there. So determine the relationship among the units. So the answer needs to be uh, have the same units, which is in feet right here. So we need to convert um, uh, the width uh, from yards to feet. So so remember, you guys, um, uh, from uh, the prior lesson right here, one yard equals three feet. And so since this is in five yards, we're going to represent it as one yard over three, I'm sorry, three feet over one yard. So the yards will cancel right there. So three feet over one yard, that way these yards cancel and we're left with feet right here. Okay, does that make sense, you guys? So we want these yards to cancel, so we're left with feet. So we put the three feet on top and the one yard on bottom, okay? And five times three is going to give us 15 feet right there, okay? All right, so we're going to use the relationship with um, uh, the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. And so since the area is equal to 315, if we divide that by the width, which is 15 feet right there, uh, that's going to give us our our length right there okay so uh, uh, so we're going to write the unit of the area as the product and then divide out the common units right there okay all right so let me just slide that up so here uh, we're going to go ahead and and divide it out right here so we're going to divide um, uh, the 315 right here divided by 15 okay so 315 divided by 15 and check this out we got feet times feet on top and we got feet on bottom so this one feet is going to cancel out one of the feet on top right there and we're left with just feet right here remember square feet is the same as feet times feet okay and so uh, 315 divided by 15 is 21 right there I know I know 15 times 2 is 30 so we have uh, 15 left over to give us that uh, uh, 15 goes into 30 twice I don't know if I'm making sense right there anyways uh, so that's how we get 21 feet so the length you guys of the material is going to be uh, 21 feet okay the length of that backyard all right, so a couple questions here. So explain how knowing to, um, how to find the area of a rectangle could help us solve the problem. Okay, well to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the length and the width. And so if the area and the width uh, are known, then we just divide uh, to find the length. So remember, uh, length times width equals area. So if we know the area and the width, then we divide by the width. That's going to give us the length right there. All right, so the second question says, uh, explain uh, why the answer is in feet, even though the units of feet are canceled out, okay, or divided out. Well, remember, uh, the material is in square feet, okay? Square feet is also feet times feet. And so what happens is, is instead of writing 315 square feet, we write 315 feet times feet, and then only one of the factors of the feet in the numerator divides out with one of the factors of the feet in the denominator. And so that's why we still have feet in the answer. All right, you guys, hope that makes sense. Take care.